on It's Supernatural! Has America been cursed for cursing the nation of Israel? Why does blessing the nation of Israel bring blessings upon America? The ancient prophets have the answers. Find out more on this edition of It's Supernatural! Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, John McTurnan, has researched facts that will absolutely amaze you. I can almost hear some of you saying, amazing. The worst disasters to hit the United States of America were directly connected with what the United States did with the nation Israel. John, when did you first come into this revelation? Of the, I mean, it's like within 24 hours sometimes these judgments occur. Y yes, Sid, yeah. Uh, I first saw it with Israel in August of 1992 with Hurricane Andrew. And on the front page of the papers was all the destruction of Hurricane Andrew. And right there was the Madrid peace process being transferred from Israel to the United States for the first time. So if you can picture this, Hurricane Andrew ran through southern Florida early in the, in the morning, about 6 a.m. it had finished. At 10 a.m., the Madrid peace process met in Washington for the first time. And the purpose of the Madrid peace process was to carve up Israel, to force Israel to give away God's covenant land for peace. And that pattern from, actually it goes, and I did a little more research before that to when the Madrid peace process started, Sid, which was October 30th of 1991. And when President Bush was giving, President Bush Sr., was giving his speech in, in Madrid to start the peace process, his own home in Cunningham-Bunkport, Maine, was being destroyed by the perfect storm sending 30-foot waves against his home. And, and now, can we call that a coincidence? Well, Sid, in my, uh, people have told me that, but in my book, I have about 40 of this, such similar disasters, and they're not weekend thunderstorms. They're the greatest disasters in American history, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane Ike, of but, course, but, is in my but book But there's today. a flip side, and the flip side is, when you are a blessing to Israel, you're blessed. There's a unique history of the United States and the Jewish people in Israel. Explain that. Sid, that's, that's the beginning of the book. I go into America is unique with, compared to any country in the world in blessing the Jewish people. Um, going back to George Washington, I have quotes in George Wash from George Washington that are just absolutely amazing, Sid. Uh, I don't know why we're not shouting this from the roof to rooftops in the church. Uh, every Christian doesn't know this. But George Washington wrote letters to the Jewish communities back in 1790, and he, he literally said to them that he wanted America to be like uh, the messianic reign for the Jewish people. He quoted Malachi for chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. And in another letter, he said the same God that created, that took the children of Israel from Egypt into the Promised Land was the same God that created these United States. Remember, America is only like a couple of years old at this time. And he said, and this is George Washington's writings, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And George Washington said that the God of Israel is the God of the United States. And so right from our very beginning, we bless the Jewish people here in America. But historically, this has been a safe haven. It's almost an unusual window of time in the history of the Jewish people. We've prospered here. Y yes, Sid. Um, but our nation has prospered right, too. Right, and you can watch, like, the, you go, I go by the Jewish people's writings. And at the time of the American Revolution, they said that they were the freest Jewish people in the world. And they said, in fact, going back to when, when Rome conquered uh, Israel, they were the freest Jews, and America became the freest people. You see the parallel? And then as America began to, uh, like, like before the Civil War, Sid, let me just catch myself on this. We know nothing, really. Even Jews know nothing of their own history in America. Before the Civil War, there were Jewish mayors, there were Jewish governors, there were Jewish ambassadors. It wasn't an impediment to be a Jew in America. Now, there may have been individuals that didn't like a Jewish person, but it wasn't an impediment. Then we come to the Civil War. 
Sid, there were eight Jewish generals in the U.S. and the mm. United States Army. Isn't that amazing? There were, I think, six or seven Medal of Honor winners who were Jewish. President Lincoln uh, specifically had a law enacted to allow Jewish chaplains. Before the Civil War, there, there were no Jewish chaplains in the Army. He specifically had a law enacted to allow Jewish chaplains in the Army. In most countries, they have laws hindering the Jewish people. Here in America, we made laws specifically to bless them in, the, in, in, in having Jewish chaplains in the army. So now, we've got this history uh, but, but of blessing the Jewish wh people. Why does this go on, though? I mean, why is it a truth that when you bless Jewish people, you're blessed? When you curse Jewish people, you're cursed? What's the basis Sid, of that? It goes back to Genesis in the Bible with Abraham. And we, you, Genesis 12, 3, for example, where God says, to, speaking to Abraham and his descendants, I'll bless them that bless you and I'll curse them that curse you. So as you bless the Jewish people, a blessing comes on you individually, but in the case of America, it came on the nation. And you know, you reveal something that I never knew, and that is the relationship between the church and the nation Israel, yes. as far as it's, it's even its formation. Explain that. Yes, Sid, starting after the Civil War, there was a sort of a continuous revival in the United States. It wasn't like, maybe a spectacular, gigantic revival, but it was a continuous revival. And the, the two themes of it, or one of the major themes, was the second coming of the Lord. And the other part was the restoration of the Jewish people back to the land. So there's a revival taking place, and at the same time, the uh, Tsar of Russia is persecuting the Jews, in, starting in 1881, 1882, with horrible persecution. Programs were just decimating the Jewish population in Russia. And the Jewish people heard how blessed they were in America. And Sid, they literally walked west out of Russia into Germany with no idea how they were going to get here, but they were going to come to America. They called it the, the famous land. And uh, individuals helped uh, these Jews leaving Germany get to America. And America opened up its arms. And no matter how many Jews came in or came from especially Russia, we took them in. So here you have Europe, closed doors. You have Russia, quote, the Russian Orthodox Christian Church, absolutely persecuting the Jews horribly. And they have to come three, 4,000 miles, whatever it is, to America. America opens its arms up. And Sid, I document in the book where the moment we started to allow these Russian Jews to come in by mass, God raised us up as a world power. And I want you to understand the moment that America stopped being under the blessings of God. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with John McTurnan and we were finding fascinating history that very few people understand of how the American church was instrumental in the formation of the nation Israel in modern times. Explain. Sid, we have been talking about that revival taking place in America and the Jewish people pouring in from Russia and the church saw the plight of the Jewish people. They were destitute, Sid. They were poverty stricken. They were beaten emotionally and it touched the heart of the church and the church said it's time for the Jewish people to have a state. So uh, in starting, actually in 1891, what history records as the Blackstone Memorial, Black, uh, William Blackstone was a Christian evangelist, and he kind of rose to the head of this movement. And uh, he had a letter prepared to the President of the United States, who then was President Harrison, asking for the President to declare an international conference for the creation of what we would call today the state of Israel so that the Jewish people could be safe and have a state. And uh, it was signed, Sid, by over 400 of the most prominent Americans. This was not just an isolated segment. We had the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court signed it. The Speaker of the House signed it, Sid. Future President McKinley signed it. Mayors, governors, um, senators, 
leaders of the Christian, like uh, D.L. Moody, the famous Christian evangelist. Of course. He signed it. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, you know, we don't hear white, things uh, like this. Uh, what we uh, hear right. is, th right. as a Jew, what I hear is Theodore Herzl and Zionism that did it. But you're telling no. me underneath that was the Christian influence. Sid, it was the spiritual foundation for it. It was the, the literal spiritual foundation for the modern state of Israel was birthed primarily, some, somewhat in England, but primarily here in the United States. And in 1916, Louis Brandeis, who was an associate chief justice of the United States, he had a Zionist Congress in Philadelphia. And in that, co in that Congress, he invited um, Blackstone to come and be the chief speaker. Hmm. And Louis Brandeis in, 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 uh, identified um, Blackstone as the father of modern Zionism. The early Zionists attributed a Christian evangelist as the, I've got that quote in my book, That's, Sid. Oh, but listen, you have so much, but what I want to find out is, you, God has shown you there have been what you call warning judgments. Yes. And uh, now we're even past that. When did the day is, can you pinpoint when the blessings started? I mean, the blessings have been on America, that's obvious, but when the blessings started to lift, can you pinpoint it? Yeah, I can pinpoint it to the day, Sid. Hmm. October 30th, 1991, when President Bush Sr. initiated the Madrid peace process. And you, we have to understand that peace process is that Israel uh, must give away covenant land, including Jerusalem, for peace. That was initiated by the President of the United States with the power of the United States behind it. And from that day, Sid, to this, we've had disaster after disaster after disaster. You know, as you mentioned, the top five disasters, including economic, are connected with this. And Sid, um, there's a um, urgency on me now, because we have spoken in the past. Well, I, 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 believe, I believe that John McTernan is a modern day prophet and what he's about ready to tell you is what's going on inside of him and it's going on inside of him because the spirit of the living God is causing him to say this. Sid, when I was on your previous shows we were kind of talking about things in the past if you remember and now it's current. We're talking about current things and Sid um, so I, I have trouble sleeping at night because of the, um, the feeling of the judgment on America. As I was telling you, it's settled like a fog over our nation, and it's really boiling down to Jerusalem. Sid, I have here in front of me a speech that President Bush gave on uh, July 16, 2007. And in it, it's, it's kind of a lengthy speech, and it's too much for me to quote. Uh, but what the president says in this speech is that he specifically says it's time for the Israelis to forget about the West Bank and to look towards the Negev and to look towards the Golan Heights, but to forget about the West Bank because it's going to become a Palestinian state. And then he mentions Jerusalem. Jerusalem is going to be the key in this. And Sid, on that, that was a Monday. And Thursday, the stock market reached an all-time high of over 14,000 points. And then on Friday, the subprime loan debacle hit. So if you take from today, and we look, we've had the collapse of Lehman Brothers recently, we've had Merrill Lynch, we've had Bear Stearns, we've had Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac, these gigantic banks and lending institutions collapse. If you trace it all the ways back, it goes back, Sid, to July 20th of 2007, that was the Friday following the president's speech to divide Israel and Jerusalem. So I believe that a, a curse has come on America, on our finances, because of the president's policy. He's put America, the, the, he's put the power of America on the Israelis to divide Jerusalem. Well, why is God so upset about dividing Jerusalem? I mean, maybe we can have a little peace in the Middle East. Well, Sid, God has a covenant with the Jewish people over the land and specifically you can look in the Bible in Zechariah chapter 12, 13, and 14 specifically talk about Jerusalem and not to touch Jerusalem, not to touch it, Sid. 
the nations that touch Jerusalem, the Bible says, will be destroyed. And listen, the Living Bible says in Zechariah, he that touches Israel is the same as someone that pokes their finger, finger. in God's eye. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. The only word I can come up with is amazing. When you look at how quickly, when the United States does something against Israel, judgments hit the United States. If it was one, coincidence. If it was 10, still coincidence. But how many, John McTernan, have you personally identified? About 70, so. and I have probably about 40 in my book. It was, the, it was too many to put them all in the book. Within many, or most, within 24 hours? Same day, Sid, 24 hours, yeah. Give me some examples. Sid, we, can got re we have recent examples. Um, June, we had the massive floods in Iowa. Worst floods in, in history. Do you remember them, Sid? Yes, of course. Okay. And the, the height of the flood, Condoleezza Rice was in Jerusalem, and she was furious at the Israelis, absolutely furious, because they were building homes in East Jerusalem. And the reason she's furious is they want East Jerusalem to become a Palestinian state. She, was, she wouldn't admit that, but she wants that to be the capital of a Palestinian state. She went as far as to say, Sid, that the United States would not recognize those homes as being part of Israel. At the exact time she was there, at the exact time she was saying this, we were having Iowa with the worst floods in history. We had major cities in Iowa underwater. We had the crops being destroyed. The dollar was absolutely free falling. The stock market was crashing and the price of oil was surging r record. Now that's in June. Mm. She goes there in August and she's doing the same thing. And we have, while she's there, Tropical Storm Frey, uh, Fay, that's Fay, was hit Florida four times. It went, hit Florida, it came out, it that came back. That was unusual, the yeah, way that kept the, doing The that. weather men were amazed at this. So at the exact time she is there um, bullying Israel again, we have the entire state of Florida being devastated by Tropical Storm uh, Faye, then Keep Condoleezza away right, from Israel. Right, Sid, right. Is that the message? Right. Well, Sid, the unofficial official policy of the United States has been to, in these negotiations, has been to divide Jerusalem. They haven't said anything officially, but unofficially it's obvious, like I just shared in June with Condoleezza Rice, what she did. On, on September 11th of all days, the Council General of the United States in Jerusalem finally let the cat out of the bag and said that the United States is officially working to divide Jerusalem. The State Department immediately denied it. They said these, they didn't quite deny it, they said these are being done in secret and you shouldn't discuss it and that. Sid, on the next day, Hurricane Ike hit Texas. The next day? The next day, Sid. The next day. And we know the damage that it's done. It's devastated Houston and that, uh, Galveston. I mean. Just tremendous areas have been devastated by this. Tens of thousands of homes destroyed and people um, homeless. Sid, then on, that actually was Friday and Saturday is when the hurricane devastated the coast of Texas. Then Saturday and Sunday, Lehman Brothers Bank failed, which is the largest bank in American, I guess in world history to fail, $639 billion. Monday, the stock market fell 300 and something points, then went up, then it fell 400, and we know the chaos that's occurred since. So we have on a Thursday, the United States coming out and is official that we're working to divide Jerusalem. The very next day, Hurricane Ike hits, that the next day, Lehman Brothers Bank fails, then the stock market has been in absolute convulsions with huge losses and everything, and it, I, you can trace it right now, back. Now, now, John, your book covers this. I know you have sent, this is the updated version, yes. uh, which is just really as updated as you can get. This is literally right off the printing, printing press. Uh, but, and you, you've sent your book to senators and congressmen, but sending it and reading it are two different things. But if I could put you at this moment, transport you to the U.S. Senate, what would you say to our senators? Look in the camera and talk. Sid, I would say to the 
politicians of America, especially Sid, it's, it's not the senators as much as it is the president and the State Department. That seems to be the real problem, Sid. And I would tell the president of the United States that as you divide Jerusalem, as you divide the covenant land, God is going to divide America, Sid. That's this, the, to back off Jerusalem, to back off the covenant land, that America has no right to interfere with God's prophetic plan. But that someone it, might say, um, I'm a Muslim, I'm uh, a Hindu, well, what do I care about that? Well, Sid, um, it doesn't really matter to the Lord whether you do it in ignorance or you do it with will. That if you, who, whoever interferes with God's uh, covenant land, who interferes with God's prophetic plan for Israel, because we know, Sid, ultimately the nation of Israel has to be there for their redemption and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what so we who, do know uh, is we know Israel will be there, but we don't know about the United States. Uh, Sid, um, with what I believe the Lord has been showing me, the United States does not have too long to exist as we know it. We have, we have done everything to provoke the Lord, but the church will not listen, Sid. There's a glazing that comes over people's eyes when I speak to them about this. When I talk to pastors, they refuse to stand up. They refuse to repent. They refuse to lead in prayer and fasting and ask the Lord to, to have mercy on us for what we're doing, to change our government's policy. They act like nothing's happening, Sid. And the judgments are falling all around us. What are you feeling in your belly at this moment? A complete economic meltdown that we are heading into a third world nation with poverty, Sid. Yeah, you know, the prophet Joel in the third chapter says that nations will be judged in the last days, amazingly, over only one issue. Yes. And the one issue, it specifically says, for dividing up my land. And now you look at this book that documents uh, up, up till uh, mo in modern days, every single time the United States has lifted their finger against Israel, horrible economic uh, judgments, hurricanes, floodings. So what are we supposed to do at a time like this? There's only one thing that you can do, and that is open up your heart to intimacy with God. That's all that counts. There are people that are listening to me right now, and you go to church, you go to mosque, you go to synagogue, uh, but I have to ask you the most important operative question. Do you know God? It's wonderful that you watch people on television that know God. It's wonderful that your pastor knows God. But do you know God? You see, this life is just a blink of the eye. That's all it is. And then eternity. And where are you going to spend eternity? Who are you going to spend with eternity? You do not know when your end will come. This is the moment that if you have ever, ever, ever thought it's possible to know God, I tell you it is. If you've ever thought that God doesn't love you, you're wrong, because God is pure love. If you will reach out to God in your way, and the only way is in the name of Jesus, if you will say, I repent of my sins, I'm sorry, and I ask to be forgiven, and I make Jesus my Lord, my Savior, the choice is yours. God's already made a choice. He loves you. He so loves you, he sent his son. Now you choose God. It's life or death. Intimacy or nothing.